Were there any studies looking at canola oil versus nuts and seeds with regards to weight loss? This is probably where this comparison is most relevant given the calorie density of oils. I know, for example, people like Dr. Joel Furman, who I've had on the show, uh, is wary of oils because of their calorie density and believes nuts and seeds are perhaps a better way to get fats without exceeding calories. Yeah, we, we looked for that specifically. We could only find one with canola specifically. Uh, they compared nuts to canola oil. And there are some experimental caveats there. Uh, it was a canola oil that they mixed with a oats, oats-based cereal. Uh, I think the, I think because of uh, uh, for, because of methodological reasons, if you just give people the canola, they're probably going to use that instead of another fat. So we might introduce another confounder. So they they created the cereal with high in canola and told people to replace the cereal they were eating for breakfast with that one. And then uh, they they report that the caloric content was a, was about even, so they kind of satisfied themselves that it was an even swap. So uh, this, there are some things that could be pointed out there, but bottom line is in that trial, so it's nuts versus this canola oil uh, medium, and they measured a lot of different parameters from lipids to glucose metabolism parameters, uh, body mass and body weight, uh, I think blood pressure, no significant difference in any of them. Uh, so it's just one trial, so I would be cautious not overstating that. We actually have a video coming soon where we went over every trial and every any study that we could find comparing oils to nuts and seeds for any kind of oil. And uh, we could we found maybe a dozen or two dozen total. So not a lot. There's definitely, it's fair to say that there's some uncertainty there. And with canola, this is the only one that I remember. Um, but like I said before, I, if someone feels safer eating uh, almonds or walnuts or flax seeds, I don't see a problem with that. Is there any early insight from that video? Is that the general trend that based on the studies that exist, there doesn't seem to be a significant benefit either way, swapping uh, equivalent calories from a, an oil, plant oil, non-tropical oil, I'm assuming, for nuts and seeds? Pretty much. There's some heterogeneity in some in some studies you see a seeming advantage of one and others another, but overall no clear superiority. And so and I don't have a very strong opinion on this, but I haven't seen clear data either way. So uh, I don't see a problem if people choose. I think it's my 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 issue is when people make confident claims and the evidence is just not there, when they say it was definitely this one is definitely going to be better because X, Y, Z. If the evidence A doesn't exist or even worse exists and doesn't support that, why would you have a, a strong belief in that direction? But this is more a, a disagreement with other communicators and not so much with the public. If, if people are more comfortable getting their fats from whole forms of fat, I, I wouldn't even want to confuse them by going over these trials, because I, I, I just don't think it's an important question in terms of nutrition science. In those studies where we're comparing an oil with nuts and seeds, how important is the, the dose that we're, we're considering here? Because it, it might be that a, at a very small dose or exposure, there's no significant difference, but at a, at a higher dose or a higher uh, number of calories coming from either oil or nuts and seeds that you begin to see a difference. Is that something that you considered? It's certainly possible. And I think we made that video a while back. I don't remember the details, but I think we we did we do have uh, a note about that with, with some trials that have higher intake. I'm pretty sure we talked about it. And I don't remember the exact, how, how high it went. Uh, but I think that's a very reasonable caveat that, you can all and you can that goes for any question. You can always say, okay, in this range that has been tested, this is the evidence, but we don't know what happens at a higher or lower range that hasn't been assayed. I think that's always reasonable to to say. So, but again, as a note of uncertainty, not a note of therefore this thing is definitely superior. 
Quick one, folks. I get asked all the time about buying supplements and getting blood tests. The good news is I've created comprehensive and completely free guides for both. Simply head over to my website, theproof.com, to download them. That's theproof.com. Okay, let's get back to the episode. I know that you looked at canola oil and body weight. Are, are people making claims that canola oil is inherently fattening? Is that something that you've seen? Uh. I, I confess that I consume surprisingly little social media content for, for a YouTuber. Uh, I've seen a few videos and I've definitely seen those claims very, very prevailingly uh, uh, about seed oils in general. I don't remember specifically about canola oil. Canola oil is making us fat. I have no doubt that we, we would be able to find if we've searched TikTok. Uh, but... Yeah, I haven't seen anybody make that distinction. Oh, seed oil makes us fat, but, but canola doesn't. What did you find there? Uh, yeah, uh, kind of similar. We There are dozens of randomized trials. We highlighted a meta-analysis of 23 randomized controlled trials where they actually found that canola oil reduced body weight. Uh, and the effect was very small, so I don't want to overemphasize that. Uh, the, the effect actually seemed more marked when comparing to saturated fat, more marked in people with diabetes. That said, I'm I'm skeptical that that's a, even that it's a real effect, let alone a clinically meaningful reduction. They had other metrics in the same meta-analysis. Uh, so this was body weight that was reduced, but BMI, waist circumference, body fat, all no significant change. So my takeaway is that there doesn't seem to be a big difference. Um, and again, the caveats, the obvious caveats, we're talking about canola oil itself. We're not talking about junk food that happens to contain canola oil together with a thousand other ingredients and is hypercaloric and hyper palatable, the potato chips and the pop tarts and whatever else. And the other caveat is that anytime you're talking about a concentrated source of fat, whether it's saturated or unsaturated, yeah, it's hypercaloric. So if you're lathering it on top of your regular diet, you're going to gain some weight. But if your overall caloric intake is reasonable, you can lose weight on a high cal on a high fat diet. So uh, I think those are those, that's not a that's not a that's not something that's going to make you fat magically. I think this is where the compared to what also comes up with regards to nuts and seeds. And uh, I think many people are of the view that if if there was a trial, and I'm not sure if there, if there is a trial that's looked at this, so ad lib where you have one group that is told to um, consume canola oil, whether it's in cooking or on salads, and another group is told not to have canola oil, but they can have nuts and seeds, and it's ad lib. So we're not equating calories. Do the people who are using canola oil in their cooking and on their salads, in their meals, do they gain more weight than the person who is getting their fats from a whole food source, nuts and seeds? Yeah, the only trial that might get to, at that question that I've seen is that the one with the cereal mix. And they, they didn't find any difference in uh, body weight or BMI or any of those things. But I don't remember off the top of my head if it was calorie matched or not. I know that they were getting about the same amount of calories from the meals, but I don't remember if that was forced upon the participants or if that was ad lib and they just ended up eating the same. So yeah, I think it's a valid question. And I think it might also vary from person to person. Someone might add a lot of oil and end up getting some weight. And and someone might, the, the, the opposite might also be true. Some people might, might find the oil not that appetizing, whereas the nuts might just disappear. I certainly get that uh, people telling me that, that they have to really be careful with the nuts because they they start eating and the bag disappears before you notice. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it's certainly possible. Yeah, good tip. If that is you, someone who can sit down and demolish an entire bag of nuts, which certainly is the case for me, is to use the nuts as salad toppers or in smoothies and that way you can kind of control how many 
or how, how much you're consuming in a serve. Mm-hmm.